About three weeks ago, we did an early spring vegetable garden tour where I showed you most of what we are growing or planning to grow in our raised beds and no dig beds this year. Now I'm excited to share with you our plan for some of our most important gardens, the medicinal herb gardens. In a perfect world, this garden would have been started as a series of no-dig beds. I strongly believe in the principles of soil health and not disturbing the delicate ecosystem underneath. The only downside to no-dig is that if you don't have a lot of finished compost and loose soil on hand already, no-dig can get expensive for larger gardens. And we simply cannot wait to get these gardens going as many of these perennials will take a few years to establish before they are mature and we're eager to be self-sufficient in our herbal medicine and make those same remedies available to you. So I swallowed my pride and agreed with my husband that to start the beds we would need to till. I will be spending the rest of my time helping the soil to recover by applying no-dig principles as we move forward. So today I'm going to share with you our strategy for creating an organic, low-maintenance perennial herb garden, plus some garden experiments that we hope will have fantastic results. Don't forget to like and subscribe and welcome to the Acadian Garden and Apothecary. In our garden, we have already planted three rows of medicinals. The very first row is a classic, beautiful Echinacea purpurea for immune system health and so much more. These plants were cold stratified in my fridge and will take a while before they begin to emerge from the soil. The second row is red clover, a wonderful herb for skin health that shows promise in helping to treat breast cancer. Red clover is prolific and easy to grow, and as a legume, it also helps to fix nitrogen into the soil. These babies are already starting to make an appearance, which is wonderful as I hope they will reduce the amount of weeding I need to do this first year. And our third row is a mix of lavender plants. Some are transplants from my previous medicine garden and are more mature, while others I started by seed this year. It's taking a bit of time to wake up, but with any luck, this area will be a lovely sight come summer. Today, Chris and I are preparing new beds. One will be a row of chamomile, while the other will be a hedge of St. John's wort. Our soils are heavy clay, so any amount of foot traffic leads to compaction very quickly. Compaction is terrible for good soil health, as water cannot be easily absorbed when it rains. So we are laying bales of straw down in the paths to reduce compaction, retain moisture, and prevent weeds. Now let's go plant that St. John's wort. St. John's wort is a popular mood-enhancing herb that is often taken in capsule form. In modern day science, St. John's wort has been promoted for helping those with depression and ADHD. It can also be applied topically to help wounds, bruises, and muscle pain. The plant itself grows to be a small bush of about three to four feet in height with beautiful yellow flowers. It's part of my herb garden strategy to use this plant as a windbreak to protect my more vulnerable plants like lavender from harsh winter winds. To help recover the soil health of this tilled row, I'm using grass clippings to shade the soil and to suppress weeds. Unlike straw, these grass clippings are high in nitrogen. As the soil recovers, worms will pull the grass into the soil and turn it into worm castings, feeding the St. John's wort. Now it's time to plant one of my favorite medicinal herbs, dandelion. Mm -hmm. 
So if you've watched any of my previous videos on dandelion, then you already know how much I absolutely love this plant. Dandelion is incredibly versatile. You can use almost all parts of the plant. I like to eat it, use it in tinctures, use it in teas. There's pretty much no way that I don't use dandelion. And so on our property, I have been harvesting the dandelion that grows naturally, just foraging it. And over time, I've started to feel a little bit bad about this because of the, the sheer quantity that my family uses. So I think it's finally time for us to do something that I never thought we would be doing, which is intentionally growing dandelion as part of our perennial gardens. Right now, I either have to use a, a hand spade or a larger spade or a shovel to harvest the dandelion root. And in a lot of the areas where I'm harvesting, the soil is very compact and it's difficult to get the whole root. Often it breaks off in pieces, which is okay because the dandelion will grow back from those roots, which is nice. But it's a lot of effort to get what ends up being a very small amount of dandelion root once it's dehydrated. So our plan is to create a, a dandelion bed that is fluffy and not compact so that the process of harvesting dandelion will will be easier when it is time to harvest. So while Christopher is preparing the rose, I'm gonna explain what it is exactly that we're doing to prepare the beds for our dandelion. The plan is to do layers of sawdust and soil. So the sawdust will eventually break down and it will make the soil really fluffy by adding lots of organic matter. And we're layering the soil just to make sure that the dandelion roots as they grow down to the soil have plenty of nutrients and minerals to, to draw from in the soil. Now there is one thing that you should know about working with sawdust. Sawdust makes a great mulch if you're just putting it on the top of the soil, but once you start mixing it into the soil, it can cause problems. So there's a bacteria that feeds off of the sawdust that will actually deplete nitrogen in the soil or it will make the, the nitrogen unavailable to the plant roots. So in order to mitigate that a bit, my plan is to use an organic fertilizer. We're using a fish emulsion mix fertilizer from Neptune's Harvest that's organic. As we layer in the sawdust, I'm going to soak that sawdust with the fertilizer. And hopefully that will just help to make sure that the bacteria have enough nitrogen to feed off as they're breaking down the sawdust without taking too much nitrogen from the plants themselves. So I'm gonna go get started and help out Christopher because I am sure he would appreciate the help. Here's that fertilizer I mentioned earlier for anyone who's interested. I'm a big believer in using what's available, which is why you will see Christopher and I using a lot of sawdust and grass clippings instead of wood chips and other mulches. Because of Christopher's occupation, we have access to this resource for free. been a lot of hard work these last few months getting everything prepared, but we are ahead of schedule and I am so excited for this summer when everything is growing and in bloom. We are truly in the process of building what is a dream coming true, and I'm so happy to be able to share this experience with you all. I have no background in farming, but I have a love of nature, an understanding of soil health, and a deep desire to play, experiment, and discover. So perhaps our gardens will be unconventional, and perhaps the more experienced herb farmers will have a more traditional approach, but I'm grateful to learn and share these lessons with you. Until next time, friends. Thank you for watching.